So, what we have done till now? We, 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 we try to find out the pack parameter that means pack capacity, voltage, current and then based upon that we found out what is the weight of the cell and then we saw the various forces which can act on a battery pack, compression, tension, shear, torsion, bending and then we understood what is the stress, what is the strain. It is uh, there was a mistake here deformation it should be deformation or de displacement not deformation of displacement. Then we have seen what are the forces acting on a battery pack and what we have seen it is a bending, bending force on the end plate, bending force on the base plate, then tension or compression on the side strips, then shear on the bus bar or in between the cells. And then we have started thinking about what would be the base plate dimensions and thickness which can take the required load. So, what we found out that we already know the length and the breadth of the base plate by virtue of setting up two modules, knowing the cell's dimensions, uh, providing the sufficient clearance between the cells and between the modules. And then we assumed some of, uh, we have some of the assumptions, it is uh, the plate is continuous, continuous rectangular plate with a constant thickness, it is simply supported at all the edges and the weight is distributed uniformly over the plate. And from that we found out, we already know length and breadth, but we do not know the thickness. So, to find out the thickness, first we found out what is the load and that load turns out to be 2.554 into 10 to the power 3 Pascal or 2.554 into 10 to the power minus 3 Newton per mm square. Since now we have the dimensions of length and breadth, we do not know the thickness, but what would be the material? there are thousands of material available. So, is there any methodology to find out what would be the best material for that particular application that means base plate. And there is a very nice methodology by Mr. F. S. B. and known as S. B. methodology. I will go through this methodology. I will try to explain it to you and it is one of the nice method, nicest met methodology to find out what could be the best material. It has the different stages. The first one is translation. The translation is what is your objective? You defined a objective function. What is your objective here? One can have a different objectives like one can have my weight should be minimum. One can have that cost of material should be minimum, weight does not matter. One would require both cost as well as weight should be minimum. Somebody else neither weight nor cost matters, it is only matters strength of the material. And when I say strength of the material, what force is acting on the base plate is the bending, bending force in that bending strength should be the maximum. One can have that it should run, it should run or it should last long. That means, inefficient type of loading, even in that case, it should run for a defined cycles one can have all those things together. So, what? So, you have to define your objective function from the fundamentals, from the stress strength theory, from the loading equation. You may have to solve the differential equation. If you do not want to do that, then you have to find out a analytical solution of that 
and then utilize that analytical solution for defining your objective function. So, that is being done in the translation. Then you have a screening. When I say screening, it could be again a multiple way. One of that is what would be the boundary condition? Because you have defined your objective function, but then you also have to put the boundary condition. My cost should be varying between 10 rupees per kg to 20 rupees per kg. In between that only it should be. So, that is the boundary condition. So, that is your screening out. If you are selecting a material, you are screening out any material which cost more than 20 rupees, I will not take. Otherwise, there would be infinite number of iteration. You will have infinite numbers of results which you do not want. So, you screen out. If any material has a density more than this, I will not consider. Only these, these materials are available. So, I do not worry about any other material. So, these are become the part of screening. There you screen. You try to reduce the number of variable or number of boundary condition. Now, once you have done the screening, then from the objective functions what you have defined, from that objective function you select the ranking of the material. Now, you have put the material properties and all other things what you have put in the objective function, from that you select what will be the rank. So, it could be uh, that uh, translation whatever the objective function we have put upon can be maximization problem or minimization problem or coupled of both. So, what I would what I require to minimize the cost, I can also require minimize the weight. I can also at the same problem, I also want maximize the strength or ability to hold the bending load. So, either it would be a maximization problem or it would be a minimization problem or it could be combination of this both together. So, based upon that objective functions output by putting the boundary condition and then solving that equation, you rank all the materials and that is what is known as ranking. Rank 1, rank 2, rank 3, rank 4 like that. Then the fourth one is supporting information. So, it is like a byproduct. Now, if two you, it is giving you two best material out of 20 materials. Now, out of two or three, which material you should select? So, you can also look upon the byproduct or additional information. Are you looking it for insulation or are you looking for a conduct conductivity or are you looking for a corrosion resistant? Now, once you have all this information, out of that one, two, three, you can select one or two or three depending upon this the, the extra information. It might be possible that first, second, third all three are of the similar level or of the same ranking, but then when you need to eliminate then you use this extra inf information to select one or two. So, nice methodology. So, this process helps us to filter out material that are chosen initially. So, initially you may have hundreds of material and then you filter while filtering out or during a screening, you have already objective functions defined. During the screening, it might reduce it. You simply discard, okay, I do not want this, I do not want this, I do not want this because of this, 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 this criteria. And then you have a 20 suitable material out of 100. Now, you have come to 20 suitable material. Now, those 20 suitable material, now you start ranking using the objective function. So, most of them will get eliminated with the ranking itself. Now, whatever is left out, if it is only one left out, which stands out with all other material, yes, obviously you would like to go. But let us suppose you have an option of two or three or four materials in the, in the ranking matrix. Then you use extra information. What else also is required? other than the, then your primary objective. What is your secondary objective? And use that to filter out to one or two. And that is how the way methodology works. 
सो ए स्मॉल एग्जाम्पल ये फॉर आवर फ्लैट प्लेट द बॉटम प्लेट द ऑब्जेक्टिव मैट्रिक्स बिकम्स एम इक्वल टू ई टू दावर वन बाय थ्री एंड दिस ई टू दावर वन बाय थ्री हैज कम अगेन फ्रॉम द स्ट्रेंथ इफ यू सॉल्व दैट इक्वेशन इट विल कम फ्रॉम दैट कॉस्ट ऑफ मटेरियल एंड डेंसिटी ऑफ द मटेरियल एंड वॉट इज आवर ऑब्जेक्टिव थिकनेस शुड बी मिनिमम if you see what we don't know is the thickness and i don't want very thick and for that i am maximizing this function the maximizing function is m equal to e to the power 1 by 3 cost of material into density m is nothing but material intact so from this material index we will look for ranking and screening out of 40 50 materials i have only selected two mild steel and aluminum 6061 now we are calculating so that's how we did the screening now from this material index after filling all those values of the material here material properties here what we see these are the material properties density of the material strength modulus and the cost these are the three variables here Young's modulus and the density is related to related to the thickness. Cost. I want my whole base plate cost to be minimum. So the my material index or turns out to be twenty one point eight into ten to the power minus three, and for alum that is that that is for mild steel. and for aluminum it's a 5.34 into 10 to the power minus 3 what i see here in the ranking since my problem is maximize m so what is the maximum here out of these two out of these two the maximum value is given by mild steel at five times almost four to five times of the aluminum 60 so which material will select will select mild steel now let's suppose this aluminum would have been around 20 or 18 which material we would have selected we don't know whatever the function what we have decided with that it's very difficult to find out which one i should select then i'll start using support information what is using what is the benefit of using aluminum what is my secondary function do i require high conductivity for more heat dissipation i'll use aluminum in that case i'll not use mild steel even though it's a slightly higher ranking but the the secondary objective function what it says that you need to dissipate the heat much faster and that's where thermal conductivity of aluminum comes in picture so that becomes one more function uh, one more variable in the objective function which we have not put initially if the material index is comparable or material ranking is com comparable then we start looking for the secondary functions if my heat dissipation itself would have been objective that would have, i would have put in the primary function the heat dissipation is not my main objective it's a secondary objective so that's why once i found out the material index is almost same ranking is almost same then i started looking for the secondary objective it here it is there is too much difference almost four times so i am not worrying about my secondary function so what i'll select here i'll select mild steel now once i have selected the mild steel i know all other properties of the mild steel what is the young young modulus 200 gpa maximum yield strength 350 mpa mega pascal giga pascal and the poisson ratio 0.3 now i need these three information to find out the thickness of my base plate and then i'll also use analytical solution i can solve the differential equation for that and that's nothing but kirchhoff kirchhoff's equation and find out all the thing or there is already analytical solutions are available 
there is something known as design data book. So, you take that design uh, uh, data book, you have the boundary conditions, you have the loading pattern and from that you find out the equation and utilize this information and then your dimensional information and then find out the thickness. It is much easier than solving a second order differential equation. So, that is what I have done. So, what we have selected here? I have selected a material mild steel. Now, we will go back to the base plate calculation that is where we have started and then it came that which material we should select. Now, we have selected the material. Now, we will start the calculation of base plate thickness. So, Kirchhoff equations for bending in plate and we have from the Rooks formula for Rooks design book is there. From that, we have a formula for stress and strain and that is a rectangular plate. So, you in this design book, design data book, you will have all types of loading and corresponding solution. So, you have to find where your problem suits most. So, what we have a rectangular plate of A length and B width simply supported at all the edges that is already there which we have defined and for that the max stress is beta q b square by t square and the maximum deflect deflection minus alpha q b to the power 4 e uh, that is nothing but Young's modulus t to the power cube and at the center of long side that r max is gamma q b we do not will not use this one. Now, what are the things you have? You have alpha, you have a beta, you have loading, you know the width, what you do not know is t square or basically what you do not know is t. So, let us move. So, first what we have to find out is the, this is the A by B ratio here given. For each a, a by B ratio, we, we you have a constants alpha, beta and gamma. So, you have to find out the alpha, beta and gamma. So, in our case, the A is 285 mm, B is 130, uh, 138 mm. So, what A by B ratio we have got is 2.06. What we have is 1.0, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, 2. 3, 4, 5. So, 2.0 where it falls? It falls almost at the 2 or we can interpolate in between 2 and 3 and exactly can find out at 2.06. But for our sake here, what we have considered it is almost equal to 2. So, now as soon as I know 2 here, now I know alpha value alpha value is 0 0.1110 and then I also know the beta value 0 0.6102. So, I know beta value here, I know alpha value here, I know Q, Q is nothing but the load which we have calculated in the uh, uh, slide earlier. What we do not know is T. So, let us calculate maximum deflection first. So, we have put all these values here. Now, when I say maximum def deflection, now it depends upon us what is the allowable deflection I should put upon, which is not going to harm anything else. So, that we can either assume, reiterate, keep on reiterating unless we find a satisfactory or satisfactory solution or through from the experience, from the past experience, we select a value that yes, I do not require any deflection more than this. And then what we have assumed is this y max should be 1 mm, not more than 1 mm. And y max, I am saying you in such plate, this would when you are putting a bending, this would come like shape like this. So, this is the maximum deflection here at the center point of this plate will, will come maximum deflection and that maximum deflection should not be more than 1 mm. 
and that has come from either from the past experience or we have put a value, we keep on iterating what would be the best thing for us. Now, as soon as we have assumed this 1 mm max deflection, then from that, now we can calculate T and that is cube root of all other values here. What we have found, it is coming around 0 0.788 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter. It is nothing but 0.8 mm. Now, you may not have 0.8 mm plate available or you wanted to put a factor of safety. Then you will go for a higher size, higher thickness. So, what we have done here is we have selected a 1 mm plate. Now, once we have selected a 1 mm plate, then we need to find out what is the maximum stress which can happen into the plate and that should not be more than the allowable stress of the plate. That value also we have. We have maximum stress of the plate, the yield stress also available there. So, now from the formula of the max stress, what we have found out? that the maximum stress which can develop by a 1 mm plate is 29.6 mega Pascal. If you see the material properties, what is our maximum yield strength is 350 mega Pascal. What we are getting is approximately 30 mega Pascal. So, it is much less than the yield strength. So, my material is not going to fail. But what we have considered till now is the only the weight of the battery pack. We have not considered any other force. There could be many other forces. When the battery pack is fitted into the vehicle and it is running on the load, you may encounter different forces. So, once you have done this iteration, you have to come back, you have to find out is there any other force acting on that and then you keep on iterating till the time your all the force calculation get satisfied. Now, one we have selected 1 mm, somebody can select even 0.5 mm, he may not have a luxury to go to 1 mm. In that case, this all the calculation, all the values will change. Calculation remains same, values will change. Now, when we are selecting the 1 mm plate, what was the design calculation is 0.8 mm and we wanted to put a factor of safety or 0.8 mm if it is not available then 1 mm, the nearest available solution is 1 mm. It could be on lower side also, but then you need to work out because in this case, my sigma max is very low, low. So, I can even go to lower side also. I can go even to 0.6 mm if it is available. And then we recalculate back everything together. In that case, my deflection would come more than 1 mm. Is it acceptable or not? If that material is easily available, it is a very cheap. And if I say no, even 1.2 mm deflection is okay for me or 1.3, whatever comes from that. Then we can go even for that selection because my sigma max would still be satisfied. So, if you have selected a plate of 1 mm thick, in that case my maximum deflection would be only 0 0.8 mm, less than what we assumed initially based upon experience or the design criteria. Any question till now? So, what we have done is we have shown you a sample of piece plate forces and thickness calculation. The same way you can do for the end plate, you can do for the side strip and inner casing, outer casing, everything. And this would be obviously it would be a long calculation process. But this is what you have to start with. Once you have done this one, 
you can automate that thing, you can put it into the Excel sheet, next time when you are doing, you are just changing the values and all the things will come out from that. But as a first step, you should start doing in this way. The next what I am going to talk about is battery swelling. What happens in the battery swelling? And this phenomenon is when I say swelling, contraction and expansion, it is mostly expansion. And this phenomenon mostly happen in post cells and prismatic cells. In cylindrical cells, by virtue of its design, it, it does not happen more. So why it happen? If a post cell, if you overcharge, because of the release of heat and that gaseous, it can swell like this, because you do not have any constant outside, it is a soft material. So, what it will do? Even application of a small internal force, it will start swelling up. Any defect inside the cell and it is impossible to have zero defect. Might be 1 in million, might be 1 in 10 million, but this can happen. Mechanical damage to the electrode during the transportation or by some blunt force, if you uh, just drop the box, cell box or on the assembly line some blunt object has hit the cell, because of that it can happen. If the cell is kept in excessive temperatures, 70 degree, 80 degree, 90 degree, 45 degree, you know our cells are based designed for 15 to 35 degree centigrade in such cases. In all those cases it is possible or during the deep discharge, so overcharge and during the deep discharge of the cell. So, some toxic gases or you say simply gases forms up and because of that it swells. What happens in the prismatic cells? Difference in temperature gradient across the surface can lead to uneven expansion and contraction. Either during the charge, discharge or deep discharge, fast charge and all the things can happen. And this include this induces a thermal stress because now you do not have a cylindrical surface. What you have? The corner you have more stiffness at the center, you have less stiffness, it is try to bulge out at the center. Now, as soon as this happens, it impacts the cell life drastically. You do not want it to happen. Since you do not have a control over manufacturing, you do not have much control over charge and discharge also because what it, once you design this is the charge side, this is the charging rate and this is the discharging rate, it will keep on happening. Anything beyond that only BMS will cut off, but still in such cases it can happen if it is not constrained properly. So, what one need to do is to constrain the cell in such a way that this expansion or contraction should not take place. In the case of pouch cell, in the case of prismatic cells, the bulging of the cell should not take place by providing the sufficient constraints. And how can I provide the sufficient constraint? By external means. And that is where the end plate comes into the picture. When we design a module or when we design a battery pack with the prismatic cells or pouch cells, we always have constraint on all the surfaces. Okay, any question till now?